Nous allons parler du parcours de Belgassen, qui n'est pas arrivé là où il est par hasard. Et on va parler de brevets, de recherche, d'optimisme. Euh, je vais parler un tout petit peu de, de Belgassem. Belgassem a été classé en 2012 parmi les 100 meilleurs inventeurs du monde entier, avec à son actif plus de 750 brevets et demandes de brevets. En 2013, euh, Belgassem rejoint la plateforme du centre de données Google. Avant cela, Belgassem était vice-président et directeur des recherches à Tessera depuis 1996. Ses dernières activités, quant à la tête de la division R&D Mobile Component, Component, le développement de technologies 3D pour les téléphones mobiles et les serveurs. Belgassem a également cofondé Silicon Pipe INC en 2012, une société d'interconnexion à haute vitesse basée dans la Silicon Valley, acquise par Samsung après. Euh, Belgassem détient un doctorat en sciences des matériaux et de l'ingénierie obtenu en 1988 de l'université de Stanford en Californie. C'est je... une, une personne incroyablement euh, intéressante, mais ce qui m'a le plus euh, frappé, et toi aussi on en a parlé beaucoup, c'est euh, d'abord et surtout ses qualités humaines. Et la grande ça, question, et peut-être que la grande réponse, c'est sa modestie. modestie. Est-ce que ce n'est pas ce qui a motorisé euh, son succès dans, dans son domaine On vous laisse juge pour ce dernier panel. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. تسمعوني؟ سواء الحمد لله. سي ديفيسيل تجيبوا لنا شاب خالد وديروا لنا وراه. سي با نورمال. واش ما نعرفش نغني. دونك جي في لو نون تاعي بالقاسم افيك ان جي سي با ان كا و جيتي امبريسيوني اللي لقيت دو سبيكرز ورا بعضاهم افيك ان بلقاسم افيك ان جي سي رار وانت ريالي بلقاسم ايزون ديسباري من الالجيري جو بونس من ليكسيك دونك ان شاء الله لو توك تاعي اليوم قالوا لي احكي على لوبتيميزم انا قلت نحكي شويه سي سا مارش با نروح نزيد نخدم ان بو بلوس باش نعاود نرجع جو في ان بو ميو Le, le talk tie, c'était euh, from, euh, je vais le faire en anglais. Uh, so, my talk will be from El Mgayer to Silicon Valley. For those of you, I, uh, I stick there, my village. Uh, it's, uh, it's a small, small village in the uh, uh, Wadrigh. For those who don't know, it's related to Wad, located between uh, Biskra and Tugurt. Uh, why I said could have been anybody? Literally, it could have been anybody. I just happened to be a number in the probabilities. Uh, just a probability happened that it's me. It could have been anybody. And I am absolutely no different than any of you. And I will, I will go through some point just to make the point that uh, anybody could have done it. So, uh, and I, I want to thank uh, Fikra especially for one thing. I have been coming to Algeria giving a talk. This is the first time it's punctual, and time is very important. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, y you have to be always, oh, uh, uh, they're not, they're showing the uh, presentation? Oh, so I'm waiting for the presentation. So uh, you have to be always on, on guard, ready to run, all the time. That's the, the motto you have to, to think about it. So uh, life, when you do things, you, you should not try to be uh, better than anybody. You have to be better than yourself. Better yourself. Get to know yourself and do better than you can. Don't worry about anybody. We don't all start with the same point. Some people have their fathers is Bill Gates, and some people have uh, 
my husband again I guess or something like that so we don't have the same funding we don't have so we start differently so you do what you can with what you have and you push forward and while going so what you do with this is you take a step by step you set goals and you go step by step and don't worry about what's happening around you so it's a small solid steps and strong goals and while going remember to leave your footprints you have to go and leave your footprints for whatever you do you are a farmer you are a scientist you are uh, uh, somebody sweeps the uh, the floors you try to do the best you can and that's what all you need to to, to do we tend to forget that so uh, if you look at it this way it looks like stairs going up this is life is very easy in fact life is not like that unfortunately it's more like this at least my life has been like this or even worse so uh, you go up and down and up and down and uh, life is full of ups and downs and you have to ride them ride them and take them to where uh, and just wake up every time when you, you do it I, I will tell the small stories I, I like to in my talks to give stories and uh, I rather have stories than uh, and uh, I was doing my uh, my taxes so I went to my tax man, a guy who's about 80 years old, and I asked him to do my taxes. And he was uh, doing his taxes, my taxes, and he told me, let me tell you an advice. And I told him, what advice do you give me? And he said, look, you are not old enough to know this. I am retired. I sit in the backyard, and there is nothing that bothers me in life than thing that I want to do and I have never done. It eats me in life and you cannot sleep when you're old. So do them now. The next day I quit my job and I went and I did something else. So if you have something in your mind and you want to do it, don't let it there. Get it out of your system. That's the best way to do things. It's by trying and moving forward, you learn things. If you break eggs, let it be. The more eggs, the bigger the omelet. So, so. So, I, I'm not trying to show you my village here, but uh, this, is, uh, this is a point to why I'm showing it. This is my village in 1968 time frame. I was about 12 years old then. And why I took this picture is specifically, I mean, it, it looks nice, nice village. The front part is uh, part of the Colon, Le Colon. Sister la maison du Colon. Destroyed everything. So, uh, I'll tell you why. This is the street where I lived. This is how it It was destroyed with the, uh, some. But this is my street. I remember I used to run in it. Why I'm saying this? I, I, at the age of 12, I had an idea. I didn't know. I was in the Sahara Desert, in a small village. You don't know anything. There is no electricity, in fact, and there is no uh, at that time. So uh, I had this idea. I used to go buy soap. My mom sent me to buy soap, and there was a card there, some card for games and all this. And I had this idea. I was a kid, so I wanted to make a game and uh, that I'll teach people geography. And I was thinking about how to do it, and I went to people and said, this is, will make very good. I made my card, and I went to people, try to incite them to do it, and <laughs> people look at me crazy. Like, but I did not know what it is at that time. So I just in the middle of nowhere. So I gave up the idea. But I never left that dream go away. I will come back to it. So to get out of my place, I realized the only way possible for me with the background I have is education. Education, education, education. So I went to Babzuar. Uh, Babzuar, I learned all the X, the X and the, the Y's that I need to know. In fact, by that time, I'm probably saturated with X and Y's. And uh, so, but one thing I did not learn is I did not learn. The universities we have here are closed. They have like a wall around them and just you're stuck there. So uh, then I went to Stanford. I did not learn the X and Y's there. I learned how to interact with the outside world. That's what I learned there. How to fill the gaps I have. And I had a lot of gaps, a lot of holes. So I took all the classes and uh, all these practical classes and all these. So, and here comes the story. I took the picture because in my last few, few years at Stanford, I was doing a PhD in solar energy at that time. 
And there is this guy, these two guys, they came to me and they said, uh, Balqasim, we are interested to do a startup in semiconductors. And I go, what is a startup? And they go, I remember this is in 80 time frames. So uh, we have to do a companies and we start it and we are the founder and we believe we, I can run it. Uh, the other person marketing and they want me to be the technical, uh, the CTO of the company. I said, no, no, no I don't want to do it. I'm going to Algeria to teach. And that's what I was sent. I was sent to go and come back and teach. So many years later, a few years later, I ran into these guys. I found they were there. They were selling company. The company went sold for $100 million. What, why I'm telling this story is these are people that believed in me more than I believed in myself. So that's the worst thing that can happen to a human being, that somebody else believes in you more than you believe in yourself. So I, I just hit me, hit me, the biggest thing hit me in life. And I went and I wanted to know everything about startups, how to do companies, how to, I learned everything possible. I just wanted to excel without telling people, of course. So then I started to work at uh, uh, IBM. And the thing went led to there and IBM, I, uh, I was working on uh, slider heads, making uh, slider heads on the, on the computers. And it was, uh, it was nice that uh, uh, I did my first uh, patent there. And man, I felt so great with that patent. Then I told this feeling, I want to have it all the time. That was the time when I discovered that I want to be a researcher. So please discover yourself and know what you love it is money, let it be money. Research, is less, but you have to love what you want to, want to do. And things will roll out from there. So I went to the, from IBM, I went to Japan, I worked in Japan, then I came back. And, and uh, then I went and we started this company called Tessera. It's an R&D center, a bunch of guys, we started it. And uh, basically the, the idea is so simple. You will tell me now, well, there's nothing in it. Uh, basically the phones, if you, uh, sorry, I probably am taking too much time, I guess. No, no, no. So uh, these are the phones that sold. At that time when we were interested, the phone was here. And the, our idea was simple, that if the, phone, if the phone is that big, nobody will buy it, and barely you can sell only a few. So if we miniaturize it and make it small, everybody will buy it. And so we went to people and say, can you give us $30 million? This is our idea. And they go, go ahead. They gave us $30 million. And uh, then we, they told us, can you find the technology? And that's it, of course, we did this, and we figured out, uh, we, we came up with a platform, how to miniaturize all the electronic chips. And things worked, one thing worked after the other. Of course, this is a private research center, so we have to make money to survive. So it's not like a public one. Uh, few of the applications that we, uh, you are all familiar, so it was used in PlayStation 2. That the memory I designed in the PlayStation 2. Then I designed the uh, memory for PlayStation 3. That's part of PlayStation 3. Then it got used in almost all the memory sold in the world nowadays. The same thing. <laughs> then it was used in the first cochlear that was used in the... Uh, that technology was used in the first cochlear. Then finally, it's used in every single cellular phone that's sold in the world, so we get a piece of it. So don't cheat, guys. If you're buying, you pay. <laughs> uh, technology, I'll continue some technologies. If you are familiar, some of you might have seen this one. This is a five megabyte hard drive from IBM in 1957. This is a hard drive, a micro SD card that I developed. It's a 250 gigabytes micro SD card. <laughs> so basically, when you know what you want to do, the idea is simple. Then you start developing. Once you know the idea, things come around. And it's like I could say, one and then I could say, one So it's, uh, you throw them as fast as you can. How small your camera could be. Of course, when we start making the phone, we knew the camera is going to come. So we knew that every single phone and the camera that existed at that time did not work. So 
we came up with the smallest camera that exists. It's used now. And the same camera was used in the pills. Are you familiar with the pills that do uh, endoscopies? So it's our camera is in there. <laughs> By the way, we, dev we don't make things. We develop technology and we license to people so people will understand. I don't make things. I prototype, develop, and sell the license. Then the extent of the technologies. Uh, we went in the NASDAQ. There's a small group of us. Suddenly, we made it to the NASDAQ. And uh, that's me somewhere there. Uh, it's a billion dollar company now. It sold 100 billion chips all over the world so far sold. So at least 10 or more than 10 chips sold for every single person in the world is using this technology. 3,000 patents issued. A camera is where in about 30% of the world market. Then, after a while, I realized I did all I could here. I got tired, 17 years. I switched and I joined Google. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you tell me what is Google, you know this about Google. But there are things that you don't know about Google. Google doesn't do only that. Most of their money comes from this and all of you. But Google makes the data center and that, those are the stuff I work in. They have the biggest data center in the world. So that's the hardware behind all their, uh, and you, you know how big it is and how complicated it is. The driving car without, uh, without driver. So uh, soon you will have a car to take you home. You call it from, come to you and pick you up. Have you seen about the, uh, the contact lenses that just announced? Those are contact lenses you use, and it's measured your diabetes. So you don't have to poke yourself. And the Google Glass. So some of you might have heard of the Google Glass. So those are uh, basically some, I, I don't want to tell you what I do at Google because I'm not supposed to. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, what I, my advice is never stop advancing and never look back except to assess yourself. Don't let life define you, you should define life. And keep dreaming. I'll come back to my, uh, my back to my childhood dream that I had in 12 years. I had it, I never let it go. When I finished my PhD, I decided I took six months and I worked on it and I made it a game and it sold, all, it sells all over the world and I get royalties on it. So never let your dream die, even if it stays inside, whenever you have the chance, do it. Si vous avez des questions à Belgasem, elles sont les bienvenues. Google, ça marche Oui, c'est bon. Ouais. Euh, Ce n'est pas pour faire de la publicité. Euh, Google, c'est le Google Glass. Je fais un peu geek maintenant. Euh, Wi-Fi. They didn't connect the Wi-Fi. There is no data. Connected. Okay. Yes, we hold Habit de demonstration, malheureusement, est ce qui paraît un problème de connexion.
Okay. Okay, glass. Google. A picture of the highest mountain in Algeria. Up, oh, went to, to Ontario. <laughs> Okay, glass. That's it. Google. Is there a problem with the connection? Okay. Population of Algeria. Je pense que la connexion est notre réch. Elle est mauvaise. On ne va pas... Take a picture. Okay, glass. Record the video. Il y a un long, un long euh, mal euh, bandwidth. Al Mohim. C'est plus ou moins. Merci. Anna, j'ai une première question. Déjà, euh, what is a patent? C'est quoi un brevet? Well, uh, it's an interesting concept. Nishinugo. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yes, I, I'm a geek, so uh, <laughs> geeks don't sit. <laughs> you you are so, an optimist. Uh, uh, so uh, a, a patent a patent is uh, people have to understand what is a patent. You don't do a patent just because you want a patent. You do a patent because you want to make money. And uh, a patent is like a real estate, a piece of land, a mosso terra, either at fi hedra. You do everything possible to ensure it and to have the paper for it, because somebody will take it away from you. Uh, if you have it in the middle between Wurgel and Tamaras, most likely nobody is going to come and pick it up for you. So you don't patent it. So uh, that's what a patent. A patent, it's a document that tells that you own these things in case somebody uses it for you. So, uh, so there are a lot of patents that we have that we never file, because it doesn't make money. So you file only when you have to make money. That's it. Um, you told me about an anecdote uh, for being the 40th uh, most uh, efficient uh, inventor yeah. in the world. <laughs> this, is a funny, this is a funny story. A funny story that uh, uh, I have about 250 plus patents issued and I have about 750 plus uh, between patents and patent applications. So, uh, so, so one day I saw the listing and I, I was listed in the top 40 uh, inventors. So I was so happy. And uh, no, I was not happy because I, was, I want to brag to my wife. It doesn't happen often that you go to your wife and you brag about something. So I went to my wife and my daughter, being two Algerian ladies. It's not easy to deal with them. A lot of respect to the Algerian <laughs> ladies here. <laughs> And uh, I told her, uh, I just uh, was listed number 40, and I have to say it in Arabic because it loses the meaning if it's in another language. Get the quarantième, c'est dernier de la classe. Uh, 
Belgasm, c'est. On prend des questions si vous voulez. Hein. Belgasm, c'est quoi What is your dream Well, my dream, I. Uh, is, for, some, for some reason, I, I'm always afraid. I mean, uh, 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 The guy, the, 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 one of the founders of uh, Intel, said, he wrote a nice book and it says, uh, uh, only the paranoid survive. I'm a paranoid guy. I am, I'm always afraid that the res my research, somebody is doing it, is going to make it before I do. So I'm always <laughs> running. <laughs> so you have to be paranoid, but you have to acknowledge when people do it, do something better than yours. So you, you have to stop. So, uh, uh, what, what's the question? Your dream. My, my dream. My dream is, uh, I was able to, uh, I really was able to make some research center with a group of people. Nobody, Eid uh, Wahda So, uh, I was able to make a private research center in the U.S. In, it's a rough uh, medium to, to work in, to do research in the U.S. Competition is very high, and it worked out. I mean, my dream, if one of these days I will be able to do something here. That will be my dream. Um, ah, there is a question, là, oui. La demoiselle derrière, la dame derrière, elle était avant et après vous. Bonjour tout le monde. Ah, bonsoir. Bon, je me présente, Wina Sahana. Euh, je suis étudiante en troisième année médecine, mais aussi Microsoft Student Partner. Alors, euh, en fait, euh, ce n'est pas une question, mais juste de, je dois vous dire bravo. Bravo pour euh, ce que vous êtes en train de faire. Parce que vous avez pu, malgré que vous n'avez pas, euh, vous vous avez, vous avez pas les moyens, au début, mais à la fin, vous avez pu réaliser un rêve. Donc, euh, bon, moi, mon rêve, c'était... Bon, mon rêve maintenant, c'est... Pourquoi pas On voit que l'informatique, euh, elle, elle est en train de se développer, mais pour le côté... Genre, on néglige toujours le côté médical. Bon, je suis stressée, désolée. <rire> bon, on néglige toujours le côté médical. Donc, pourquoi pas inclure un... Bon, le côté médical, beaucoup plus dans l'informatique. Bon, moi, j'essaye maintenant. Oh, oh, C'est intéressant. Le côté médical, je m'implique. Oui. Je m'implique personnellement parce que je m'intéresse sur les diagnostics. Mm -hmm. Les euh, medical diagnostics, ils sont en train de développer des chips mm -hmm. qu'on met directement sur le téléphone. Et ils font le dire, euh, au point où j'étais tellement intéressé par la technologie mm -hmm. que j'ai investi mon argent dans une petite start-up. Mm -hmm. Juste qu'on me laisse voir ce qu'ils sont en train de faire. Ah, je peux terminer, s'il vous plaît. Parce que nous, par exemple, l'an passé, on a essayé de, de participer dans une compétition Imagine Cup. Notre but était de faire une application qui fait le diagnostic. Malheureusement, on n'avait pas les moyens, donc on n'a pas pu réaliser. Genre, est-ce que... Je ne sais pas. Je ne sais plus quoi dire. Euh, <rire> je serais ici. Le Rasoul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a ثلاث أشياء لن ترجع السهم إذا انطلق الكلمة إذا خرجت والفرصة إذا ضاعت. Merci et bravo encore une fois. Bravo. Il y avait un monsieur qui voulait demander une question après Pierre. Oui. Le monsieur en gris là. Oui. I'm I'm here. Après, c'est toi, Pierre. Hello. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Osama Bougan, and I'm software engineer. Uh, first, uh, let me thank you for sharing your inspiring so story with us. I have a personal question, because there is a misconception here in our society that uh, says that if you want to succeed, you have to be a genius. So what is your IQ? Uh, if you want to say any, شوية كي جدي الله يرحمه ما يسمعش. Okay. So uh, there is a misconception here in Algeria and um, in the world in general that says if you want to be a big shot, like uh, the American says, you have to be a genius. So what is your what is your IQ? No, I I, I uh, my my IQ is very low. 
I, I, no, I, I'm really, I, I haven't been the best by any mean. Uh, all I did is uh, I looked for chances, and when the chance came, I took them and I worked hard. I just want to uh, see if it's true or not. No, so I, 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 I don't think you have to be a genius. A genius will do th other stuff. They think that the geniuses will do. But for your daily life and uh, coming up with things, uh, you don't need to be a genius to do this stuff. Thank you. Definitely you don't need genius to do what I did. Thank you. C'est la dernière question parce qu'on a été 45 minutes avec Habba. Allah ibarak. C'est la dernière. So, so, I mean, I was working 10 years ago in IBM. As a, yeah. in, and at the time when uh, scientists were patenting, yeah. they get no money, just honors. Yeah. So my question is, what about Google? You get money with patent or not? Because... Go ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Well, let's, uh, I, uh, through my life, have never got paid for uh, my patent. I got paid so little. Well, I got paid in stocks. So I own a lot of stock in the company, so that's <laughs> another story. But uh, uh, most companies didn't pay you for it. They pay you a little bit, comparing to, but they don't pay you a lot. Uh, no, I, I know only one or two companies that pays quite a lot, and if I, uh, if I multiply them by the, the number of patents, I would have been uh, quite wealthy. But uh, one thing, uh, for those who want to do technologies or they want to be scientists, money is not in your uh, future. <laughs> if you do want a science, money is not there. You don't do it because you want to be rich. You do it because you have an itch to do it. And you cannot sleep until you do it. My, my last question, uh, as always, what is the definition of optimism for you? Uh, uh, for me, opt uh, optimist, uh, somebody who came from a village like mine. <laughs> so uh, optimist is very simple for me. There is nothing impossible. That's it. There's nothing impossible. Merci. You, you try to do it by any means. If you don't succeed, you don't succeed. There's nobody uh, telling you that you have to. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least you give it your best shot. Thank you very much. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you very much for your talk. Thank you for your time.